We are not the 930 News. We have a bigger studio and better camera angles. But when it comes to credibility, they are just slightly ahead of us. Believing us is like believing driving with your feet is a good idea. Contrary to popular belief, any similarities to actual people, events and pets are purely coincidental. And now, the news. The headlines. Entrepreneurs cash in on lucky charms to help gamblers at the IRs. Hawkers draw up plans to improve hygiene and food safety standards. And state investment firm Tembusu Holdings extends an olive branch to the Greek government. Hello and welcome to another edition of The Noose. I am BBC. And I'm Adriana Wow. And check out our very own news mugs. I bet even Channel News Asia doesn't have their own mugs. Hoo hoo, winner! Who cares about the news awards? Moving along, just when the global economic recovery was underway, Greece emerged as yet another country mired in severe debt. And that has threatened to plunge the country and global economies into chaos again. Geez, we're really starting to sound like a real news bulletin. <clears throat> While the European Union mulls over how to help Greece, one Singapore company has offered some assistance of its own. Nita Gurud reports. After years of economic mismanagement, Greece is finally paying the price for its massive debt problems. But this Greek tragedy could soon have a helping hand from the other side of the world. Singapore's state investment company, Tembusu Holdings, announced today that it will make a huge loan to Greece to help lessen the country's debt. I'm here at Tembusu Holdings where a press conference about the rescue package is about to take place. Well, um, hello everyone, and um, thank you for coming down today for the press conference. Feel free to ask as many questions as you want, as you know we are very comfortable with answering questions. <clears throat> so, um, the proposal as we see it, um, it'll be a very sound investment for the company, as we will be offering an unconditional loan to Greece to wipe out its debt. But on one condition, of course. Uh, what exactly is that condition? Greece, as you know, it has an incredible supply of oil. We at Tembusu are well aware of the market value of oil and we want it. As you know, cars, planes, trains, even bicycles run on oil. So the condition is that Greece is to supply us with as much oil as we want in the future. Not too much, but Enough to keep us very, very happy. I hope all of you can see that this is an incredible bargain for our company and that we deserve pats on our backs for this forward-thinking investment strategy. Um, but sir, Greece isn't well known for its oil deposits. Are you perhaps referring to olive oil? <laughs> olive oil? Yes, Greece doesn't have that much crude oil deposits. Perhaps your analysis is slightly, uh, only slightly wrong. Greece, however, is one of the world's top producers of virgin olive oil. You know the thing that you used to cook with? <laughs> virgin olive oil. Um, who prepared this report? The, in the intern. Well, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, yeah, of course, yeah, um, I knew it was olive oil all along because pasta tastes so much better when cooked in olive oil and olive oil also makes your hair really shiny. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I think I have to um, go off and um, kill someone, right? I mean, um, excuse me. Um, I have to go do something right now. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for being here this afternoon. Uh, sir, but sir, sir? So much.
much for the press conference on the olive branch offered by Tembusu Holdings to Greece. This is Nina Gurud signing off for the news. Back to you in the studio. Going to the casinos at the two integrated resorts is most likely to make you poorer. Not only do Singaporeans and PRs have to pay a hefty $100 entry fee, they also have to accept that the odds are stacked heavily in favour of the house. But one entrepreneur is convinced that he has the perfect solution to help gamblers with their luck. Jojo Joget finds out more. IR, IR, IR. That's the latest Singapore sensation. Since the opening of the Singapore Integrated Resorts, local hotels, restaurants and even loan shops have seen the increase in businesses. Even some enterprising Singaporeans have jumped onto the casino bandwagon and they have also started their new businesses. One of these entrepreneurs is 36-year-old Feng Shui master Michael Huat, who is also the designer for Sure Win Lucky Huat Red Underwear and Prosperity Briefs. Uh, the Feng Shui at the IR is actually very much to the casino's advantage. Lah, huh? uh, you take a look. Hey. But to counter that huh, and to have better luck, I have specially designed my Suerwin Lucky Hot Underwear series. Ah, you see? You see? Ah, it is blessed ah, with 88 lucky ingredients. Ah, I have rabbit's foot, four leaf clover, uh, eagle feather, lucky horseshoe, and also ah, I have the, the golden Singapore one dollar coin. Oh, so beautiful, you see? With his newfound success, Michael Huard plans to introduce new designs in his underwear series, including summer and winter collections for the public. Hi. What a Okay, okay. Ah, $10, $10. Thank you, thank you. The okay. integrated uh, resorts are indeed creating a ripple in our economy, supporting a growing industry in designer underwear. This is Jojo Joget reporting for the news. Okay. Hello, can I try one? Oh, okay, yes. okay. New ah. channel Asia News. Ah, you take it, you take it. Okay. okay. It's free. Ah. Ah, free, you take it. Ah. I think too small okay. for me. It's too, too small too, for me. I have your size, I have your size. Don't oh, worry. Yes. No worry. Okay, this one, this one, you try. Ah, this wow. one, the, wow. the material is so nice. Ah. So big. Ah, okay. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Ah. Thank you. Ah, channel Asia News, you help me, I help yeah. you. Ah. Okay, okay. Okay. Ah. Okay, thank you. Hey, go slowly, ha. Huh? Time now for a quick commercial break. But be sure to stay with us here on the news as hawkers dish out some sound advice on staying alive. Ah, ha, 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 staying alive, staying alive. Ha, 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 staying Welcome back to the news. Ladies and gentlemen, just in case you didn't know, the news team was recently presented this wonderful trophy by the deputy CEO of MediaCorp, Mr. Sean Xiao, for our outstanding achievement in contributing nothing to journalism. An honour usually reserved for most broadsheets in Singapore. Last year, a food poisoning case in a local hawker centre highlighted once again the importance of hygiene standards at eateries. And some hawkers now have put in place measures to ensure that unhygienic food ceases to be a problem. Here's Nita Gurud again, again, with the report. Oh, <laughs> After all the controversy that was created by the Rojak incident last year, several store owners have had their own internal reviews to come up with measures to reduce the risk of such incidents ever happening again. Safri bin Mata Lembu is one such example of an affected entrepreneur. Uh, Mr Mata Lembu, can you please tell us more about these preventive measures that you're going to put in place? OK, before I say anything, I want to say hello first. Hello. You know, my father owns a mee goreng store. So when I was very young, very small at that time, every day I eat mee goreng. And you know what? I go to the toilet a lot. For 35 years, I've been getting stomach ache. You know what does that show? What does that show? 
Um, no. What does it show? It goes to show that this kind of thing cannot be avoided. If you want to eat, you must be prepared to go to the toilet. Because if you continue to eat and then you don't go to the toilet, or feeling nausea, it either means you have constipation or the food is not tasty. But Mr. Lembu, you haven't mentioned anything about the preventive measures. Uh, for example, like using more hygienic methods of cooking? Ah, of course, of course. But I got a better thing than that. Lah. You know what? I got a very good idea. I want to make them sign disclaimer form. Before they eat the food, they must sign disclaimer contract like this. Brilliant, right? Brilliant! Brilliant like Roti John! What's so brilliant about Roti John? I am going to ignore that ignorant comment about Roti John, okay? Okay, but let me tell you something about the contract. Ah, before you eat from our stall, you must sign this form first so that you will not hold us liable for anything like stomach ache, headache, or even coma. Brilliant, right? Brilliant! <laughs> Other hawkers I spoke to say customers should also be more responsible in terms of the food they purchase. Okay, if you buy um, my lassa or you order any kind of food uh, that contain a coconut milk, don't go and order the drink that also contain milk. Uh, surely you will get stomach ache on. Uh, and then if you see a store, uh, the queue very, very long, and then the auntie and uncle from the store, uh, Never ever go toilet one. I will surely avoid that store. Huh? Think properly first. Uh, and, and then if you see three or four uh, store selling the same thing in the same hawker centre, don't ever ever buy from the one that tell you uh, they are the best in the world, best in the universe. Don't buy. Buy from the one that tell you they are best in that hawker centre. Uh, that is truly the best food. Uh, Meanwhile, the National Environment Agency is also stepping up efforts against errant hawkers who continuously flout hygiene standards. We are not amused by all those hawkers who think they can hide behind 101 endorsements by Channel 5, Channel 8, Channel U, Makan Susa and all that. Honestly speaking, some of those Makan places that have been lost should never be found again. So starting from next week, all those hawkers who fail to maintain grade A for hygiene for a minimum of six months will be sent for cleaning boot camp at any one of Singapore's underground sewage facilities, also known as new water plant, such as uh, uh, this one. All right, it's time once again for We Are Singaporeans. Or are we? Can you name the field that is between the Singapore Cricket Club and the Singapore Recreation Club? I don't know. I'm quite sure where is it anyway. Oh, no, this one. Jerome Tomasi Club. This one is Skip. Uh, Ceylon Cricket Club, is it? Padang. It's at uh, the Padang, sorry, sorry. I'm mistaken the Padang. Padang Field. Uh. Padang. Is it Padang? Padang. 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 <laughs> oh, correct. <laughs> Padang. Correct. Padang. Padang. Padang, yeah. Big patch of grass. A bombshell, I think. <laughs> no, I'm not too sure. Who was the first Prime Minister of Independent Singapore? Lee Kuan Yew, David Marshall. Lee Kuan Yew, yeah. Lee Kuan Yew, I think, right? David Marshall, isn't Prime it? Minister, eh? Prime Minister is Lee Kuan Yew. Oh, no, Lee Kuan Yew, Lee Kuan Yew. Lee Kuan Yew. Oh, Goh Chok Tong. Mr. Fishak. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. This is the David Marshall. Uh, Lee Kuan Yew. Lee Kuan Yew. Alright. Don't really know. You show Fishak. Uh, Lee Kuan Yew. Alright. David Marshall. Sir Yusof Isha. Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. Lee Kuan Yew. 
Huh? Are you sure? <laughs> He's not the first one. Prime Minister. Oh, is it the David Marshall? Uh, sorry, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew? David Marshall. Mr. Lee Kuan Yew? No, Prime Minister. David Marshall. Oh, this one I skip, uh. okay. cannot. Uh. Makes you wonder how much Singaporeans know about the rest of the world. <laughs> Time now for another short break. Coming up in two minutes, Singapore's favourite beauty queen reject reveals what she's been up to since that banana incident. Nasty. <laughs> what banana incident? Welcome back and thanks for watching the news. Every Singaporean by now would be extremely familiar with the former beauty queen turned celebrity Reese Lowe, the one and only Booms and Shings girl. However, what viewers might not be aware of is that she has been very busy recently with her latest project, something that she feels will excite her fans to no end. Here's Jacques Wee with this exclusive interview. It may have appeared to the general public that our favorite ex-beauty queen, Ms. Riz Lowe, had disappeared from the public's eye. But once again, we've outdone ourselves. We have arranged for an exclusive interview with Riz herself to find out more about what she's been up to lately. So, Ms. Lowe, where have you been all this while? Yes, I want to apologize to my fans uh, because I took a long trip to the safari, South Africa, because I wanted to do research for my diploma in hospitality and uh, travel tourism and also to do research for my new book yeah oh so you're writing a new book so tell us more about it my book is about me it's all about me and uh, about my personality and it's all about me yeah so it's safe to say that you're writing an autobiography no i'm not writing well I'm not writing an autobiography because I don't know anything about cars and I don't care about what people think because it's all about me, yeah? Okay, so um, can you tell us more about this book? Yes, of course, it's my pressure. As you can see, this is the cover, yeah? This is me posing in my red bikini with a banana. And also chapter one will be about uh, when I'm a little girl. Boy, you're cute. Yes, I am! When I was a little girl, you see, I already love makeup so much. And now, I love makeup still. And also, I will be writing about my other favourite topic is leopards. I love leopards so much. I'm a huge fan of leopards. And also zebras. I will also be writing about uh, my two days as Miss Singapore, yeah? And last chapter is about bananas, yeah? So, are you using a ghostwriter? No, like I said, this is not a ghost story. Uh, I don't believe there are ghosts in Singapore, yeah? Uh, I, I wrote the book, it's about me. It's how I see myself and my personality. And uh, this time, I wrote a lot of new words. It's very fun and exciting, not just booms and shings. Many other new words. So, have you found a publisher? Yes, I am. Uh, I want to show the world that beauty has its own purpose and that not all beautiful people are being bought it. Yeah? Well, thank you very much, Ms. Rizlo. And there you have it, another worldwide exclusive from the news. Oh, if you buy two copies, you can get one free banana. Yeah? Thank you. <laughs> get it now. Or tomorrow. Time now for a quick update about the financial world with Andre Chichark. Hello, Singapore. Well, well, well. The year's most anticipated event has come and gone. I'm talking, of course, about England's exit from the World Cup. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah! <laughs> with that, the total number of Singaporean millionaires has dropped by 40%. 
following that totally unexpected loss to Germany two weeks ago. I've also heard that the French, Italian and English-speaking communities have started to form joint support groups to deal with the trauma of a disastrous World Cup campaign. Local football clubs have also offered their expertise in matters such as living with low self-esteem and abuse. And an interesting report just in today, it's estimated that Singaporeans bet a total of 780 million Singapore dollars during the World Cup. That's right, you heard me right, 780 million freaking Singapore dollars. Okay, it's suggested, it's been suggested, FIFA will use this figure to price World Cup telecast rights for Singapore in the future. Hmm, what do you do? Money talks, and it's true. I've heard it. I say hello, it said goodbye. Hmm. All right, that's all from me. This is Andre Chichak. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Andre. All right, now let's cross over to In Cheek Tiger Teal for the weather. City up! Listen up, all you soft going young Singaporeans. Tomorrow is going to be hot as hell. Hot as when I stick my boot up your during morning PT. You know you like that warm fuzzy feeling, right? I don't care whether you're allergic to sun, sweat, grass, or clothes. You maggots better toughen the f and get out there and do it. Because you should be thankful for the sun. If it was dark all the time, you wouldn't see me clipping up behind you with my chunko stick. Okay, I said too much. Now knock it down 100. Whatever floats your boat, Tiger. All right, that wraps up this edition of the news. Be sure to check our website for more news and useless information. I don't know why they keep asking me to say that. They never update that thing ever. Shh, good night. Uh, Bye-bye. It's just so true.